Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen, welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show slash what was on sale at the grocery store crossover. Um, we're going to do a recipe out of the National Cookbook. This was, uh, this was produced in 1932 during the Great Depression. Um, and if it is to be believed, they are recipes that represent all of the various corners of the United States of America. Recipes from all over. The recipe we're going to do today is called spaghetti. Um, and then in parentheses, this is what really drew me to the recipe, as cooked on Catherine Street, Philadelphia. So, um, this is a recipe for spaghetti as cooked on a very specific street in Philadelphia. I looked it up on Google, uh, Google Maps this morning. It's a very short street, it's one way, and it's all sort of uh, maybe three or four story row houses. I don't know what was going on on Catherine Street in 1932. I'd love to know what was happening there and why this recipe is honed in so closely on that. Now, the what's on sale part is um, this steak. I'm supposed to take four ounces of raw round steak and cut it fine, which I have. Now, I was at the grocery store this morning, this steak, had two stickers on it, and so they put one sticker over top of the other, already deeply discounted, probably uh, about 40 or 50 percent off already, and then it had a 30 percent sticker on top of that, and when I looked at it as I opened up the package um, in order to cut it up, I realized that the uh, sell-by date was yesterday. They probably shouldn't have let me out of the store with it. Now it tells me in a food chopper to grind together onion, garlic, and bacon, so I'm going to use my food processor. Now, I'm supposed to put this into a saucepan with a little bit of olive oil. So I've got the pan on heating, drop a little bit of olive oil in there, and we'll get this over. It's, it is pretty much um, ground pretty fine, which I think is what they're talking about. So they're talking about a food chopper, and those are one of those hand crank uh, grinders, essentially. It was used a lot, and I've got quite a few cookbooks in the collection from companies that sold those uh, tabletop food grinders. Very common in this time period. So, okay, in with the bacon, onion, and garlic, chopped fine. Now it tells me when the bacon starts to color, which I think we're starting to get some color here. It looks pretty brown. I'm supposed to add in Sliced mushrooms and the beef that we cut up fine. Now I've used fresh mushrooms. Um, and when I when I read and reread this recipe, I do know that even in my lifetime, um, when I was a little kid, fresh mushrooms at the grocery store were not really a thing. Um, it was canned mushrooms. My mom always used canned mushrooms. And I'm, I'm wondering about that, that break between fresh or canned and how that's going to affect cooking time. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle in the flour at this point. Okay, so I am really worried that the, that the flour is going to clump and it's going to be horrible. Um, just following the recipe. We're going to do what it says. It's going to be fine. Someone who lives on Catherine Street in Philadelphia in the 1930s, probably the 1920s, um, said this is the way that they make their spaghetti. So you're going to have to trust me on this. I just added two cups of tomato, parsley, and salt and pepper. I apologize. I forgot to hit record. My brain is elsewhere right now. Um, I'm only a couple of weeks away when I'm filming this, only a couple of weeks away from the Give Hope Wings trip, the fundraising trip out to the east coast of Canada. And so I've been I've been working through all of the planning, fuel stops, how to get to Charlottetown, the things that we're going to do along the way, hotel rooms and that sort of thing. Um, my mind is a million miles away, but you still have to cook dinner. And this seems like a really easy weeknight meal. Um, it seems really hearty. Might be a little low on spicing. Really, all we've got in there is salt, pepper, parsley, um, 
garlic, if you consider garlic one of those spices, but none of the traditional what we'd think of as Italian spices because, of course, this is not Italian spaghetti. This is Philadelphia spaghetti. Now, I'm supposed to put a lid on this um, and simmer gently for a half an hour. And what makes this a great weeknight meal is this only simmers for half an hour. And according to the book, I'm supposed to cook the pasta for 20 to 25 minutes. I'm supposed to cook the pasta almost as long as we're cooking the sauce. Okay, half a pound of pasta into the boiling water. And I follow the, the more uh, current 2024 version of cooking pasta, nine, 10 minutes, uh, just until it's barely cooked. Okay, pasta's cooked. So we'll take it out of the pot. And we pour that into our serving bowl. And grate over some cheese. And then a couple of scoops of sauce on top. And then the instructions say, toss with two forks to fully combine. I'm gonna need more sauce. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Hey, friends. That looks pretty good. It's all sorted up. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, I don't know. There's, there's something about mixing it with forks. I feel like I should be in a, in a restaurant doing, what is that salad? A Caesar salad table side. Okay. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, God. Maybe we'll smile, we'll smile and nod. Maybe that's just me. It is just okay. you. Okay. So um What? You're not doing the full fancy twist? Yeah. Oh there we go. Okay. Woo! I was a little bit worried there. And you can you can scoop out a little more sauce if you want. Well for um, now I'll just taste it. Thank so, you. This this really the sauce cooks for half an hour. Okay. After you've got it made. So it takes maybe 20 minutes to cut everything half an hour to cook the sauce. I only cooked the pasta for nine minutes, not the 25 that it says in the, in the recipe. There's really not much. Standards have changed. Yeah, there's, and there's really not much in it. So I've been nibbling on the sauce. It tastes pretty good. That's pretty good. There's, uh, there's a flavor I don't readily associate with pasta, but I can't quite pick out what it is. Hmm, bacon. Okay. <laughs> there's a quarter pound. All right, then quarter pound of bacon um, whizzed up in the food processor with the onion and the garlic, and then you fry that. This could be a Tuesday night after work meal. That's pretty good. Definitely. I like it. Mm -hmm. Works, for, works mm -hmm. for me. And if you needed to put oregano in it and, and hot pepper flakes in it and I'm not missing other that. stuff, I'm not missing it either. And if you wanted to, you put this on a Saturday, I think, and that would cook for hours and would be absolutely amazing. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, spaghetti, not from where you live, not from where you're from, unless you grew up on Catherine Street in Philadelphia in 1932. <laughs> this is very this specific. Is, it's their, their street recipe? Their street recipe, 1932. I feel like there's a whole social story that goes with, with Catherine Street and why they call it their recipe. Yeah. Uh, maybe you live on Catherine Street in 2024. Maybe your great-great-grandmother lived on Catherine Street in the late 1920s. Tell us the story. Tell us the story. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.